My God, I hate drugs. Sino na ng grupong Tindig Pilipinas at si ni Senador Antonio Trillanes IV ang plano raw ni Pangulong Duterte na gumawa ng isang revolutionary government sa gitna ng umano'y destabilisasyon. Sa tingin nila, hakbang ito ng Pangulo para patahimikin daw ang mga nasa oposisyon. Pero giit ng presidential daughter at Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte, lahat ng sinasabi ng Pangulo ay base sa intel report mula mismo sa oposisyon. Nakatutok si Steve Dailisa. Nagsama-sama kahapon ang mga miyembro ng Tindig Pilipinas sa UP Diliman sa paglulunsad ng petition wall na nananawagan kay Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte na pumirma sa waiver na mabuksan ng mga bank account niya at kanyang pamilya. Dinaluhan nito ni Senator Antonio Trillanes IV. Ay mag-dedeclare daw siya ng revolutionary government. Para pigilan tayo lahat dito na kumukotar sa kanya. Yung mga ganyang uh, pananakot ng revolutionary government, e eh, pang iba ng usapan niya ni. Eh. Nitong Webes, sinabi ng Pangulo na hindi siya magdadalawang isip na magdeklara ng revolutionary government sa gitna ng mga umanay tangkang pabagsakin ng kanyang liderato ng mga umanay dilawan at mga pulahan o ang New People's Army. Ayon kay Trillanes, unconstitutional ang revolutionary government. Ang pahayag daw ng Pangulo, layong ilihis ang isyong kinasasangkutan ng kanyang pamilya. Pero ayon kay presidential daughter at Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte, kasing totoo ng terorismo ang bantang destabilisasyon. Lahat daw ng sinasabi ng Pangulo kaugnay rito ay base sa intel report at mapagkakatiwala ang sources mula sa oposisyon. Kilala rin daw nila ang mga nagnanais na agawin ng kapangyarihan sa kanila. Dagdag pa ni Inday Sara, hindi raw insecure ang Pangulo kung kay Trillanes din lang naman o sa grupong Tindig Pilipinas. Sa statement kasi ng Tindig Pilipinas, sinabi nitong paranoid at takot mawala ng kapangyarihan ng Pangulo kaya naisip nitong magpatupad ng revolutionary government. Ayon naman kay Presidential Communication Secretary Martin Andanar, layon ng Tindig Pilipinas ang magpakalat ng kasinungalingan para sa pansariling agenda. Kaugnay Obay, naman ang pagpirma barang. sa waiver ilang beses nang iginit ng Pangulo na wala siyang tagong yaman. Buwelta rin ni Inday Sara kay Trillanes, kailangan patunayan muna nito na hindi siya sinungaling. Tsaka niya bibigyan ng waiver ang senador. Ayon naman kay Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Attorney Salvador Panelo, dati nang nag-execute ang Pangulo ng Bank Secrecy Waiver noong May 2016 para pabulaanan ang akusasyon noon ni Trillanes na may dalawang daan at labing isang milyong pisong transaksyon sa kanyang account sa BPI. Steve Dailisa, Nakatuto, 24 Oras. Hindi may kakailang bahagi na ng kulturang Pinoy ang basketball at makikita rito sa Pilipinas ang isa sa sinasabing pinakamagagandang basketball court sa mundo. Ipinatayo yan ng laking New York pero dugong Pinoy na rapper na kilala sa tawag na Mr. Pinoy Hoops. Kilalanin siya sa Pampagood Vibes ni Mav Gonzalez. Welcome to the world famous tenement basketball court here in Taguig. Umaro man o umulan, tuloy ang basketball sa court na ito. Ay sino nga man daw ang hindi maeengganyo kung ganito maganda ang court. Maganda po yung pagkakapintura ng court. Masaya po. Sikat. Ang pagsasaayos ng court na ito naging posible sa pangunguna ni Mike Swift, a.k.a. Mr. Pinoy Hoops. Isang Pinoy rapper at basketball enthusiast si Mike pero laking New York. Kasama ang kanyang mga tropa na taga-tenement, pinapalitan at pinapaganda nila ang mga naglalakihang mural sa court. Naging top 5 na most beautiful court ang tenement sa buong mundo. Minsan na itong nabisita at nakapaglaro pa ng street basketball ang mga international basketball stars. Ito isang milagro na si Lebron James ay nakapunta dito sa tenement. Nagsasagawa din sila ng basketball clinics at palaro gaya ng picnic games. Importante siya na merong outlet yung mga kabataan para makaiwas sila sa mga masasamang bisyo. Yun ang naging libangan nila. Aral, laro. Training. Hindi man kinagisna ni Mr. Pinoy Hoops ang lugar na ito. Ang kanyang pagmamalasakit sa tenement at mga taga rito, katumbas na rin ng pagmamahal sa tunay niyang pamilya. 
Siguro ang pinakadulo at tuktok ng wish namin dito, mailigtas talaga ang buong tenement na hindi na siya gibain. Every court can dream. Mav Gonzalez, nakatutok 24 oras. Stressed ka ba? May labindalawang tips ang health department para makaiwas sa stress at hindi yan mauwi sa depression. Alamin ang mga yan sa pagtutok ni Dana Tito. Habang naghihintay ng pasahero sa terminal, nakasandal lang si Leo sa kanyang tricycle. Papikit-pikit, pateks-teks, hindi naman daw siya tinatamad. Pangontra, aburido lang para hindi masyadong nadidibdib ang problema. Pag iniisip mo kasi, parang natutuliro yung utak mo. Ang mga kasamahan niya, iba naman ang diskarte. Pag busy ka, mag-exercise. Bumabiyahe lang para mawala yung stress. Ang mga ito pasok sa 12S tips ng Department of Health para malabanan ng stress. Self-awareness o pagiging sensitibo sa sarili at sa nararamdaman. Scheduling o pagsasaayos ng oras. Siesta o yung mga sandali ang pagpapahinga. Speak to me o pag-share sa nararamdaman. Sounds and songs o pakikinig sa musika. Sensation o pagpapamasahe. Stretching. Socials o pakikisalamuha sa kapwa. Smile o pagngiti. Sports, stress debriefing, at spiritualidad o pagdarasal. Kapag binaliwala raw ang stress, babala ng doktor, pwede itong mauwi sa depression na kailangan ng agarang therapy at gamutan. Sa panlabas, aakalaing pareho ang sintomas ng stress at depression. Pero kumpara sa stress, mas pangmatagalan at malalim ang epekto ng depression. When it comes to loss of motivation, the person may start uh, hating. Loathing himself or herself, maybe to the extent of even hurting oneself, or at worst, probably even have acts of suicide. Kung makararanas ng mga sintomas ng depression, pwede ng tumawag sa hotline ng DOH para sa agarang atensyon. Dano tingko ko na katutok ben te kwatro oras. What are transport regulators saying? My transport group, Piston, says it took them three months to prepare for this two-day strike in an attempt to stop a plan that would deprive them of their livelihood. Brace for the biggest transport strike yet. That's the warning of transport group, Piston. President George San Mateo says expect more than 200,000 drivers and operators nationwide protesting the planned GP modernization program. Ang issue rito is yung pagtutol do sa phase out ng GP at yung takot ng mga operator na mawalan sila ng kabuhayan dahil nga hindi nila makaya hindi makaya yung laki nung laki nung gagastusin at laki nang uutangin. Metro Manila and more than 20 provinces and cities will be affected by the strike. The group will also hold a noise barrage in Cubao and eight other locations in Metro Manila. LTFRB board member Eileen Nizada says, according to intelligence reports, leftist groups and Piston are plotting against the government. We are receiving reports that the transport strike tomorrow led by Piston will be supported by other left leaning groups. Allegedly, the plot is to destabilize government. Stone denies the allegations. Huwag haluan ng distab, distab scenario ni Lizada. No? He's imagining things. No? Uh, well, ano na lang yan? Para mag, uh, attempt na lang ng gobyerno yan through Lizada no, na, ano, na alisaan na moral basis yung dalawang araw na strike. The government, meanwhile, prepares six areas where commuters can get free rides on government vehicles and private buses that will charge a minimal fare. MMDA's Metro Bay's hotline is 136. For those who will be affected, pwede ho nilang i-contact yung 136 and uh, papapuntahin ho namin yung mga sasakyan to the areas. Most passengers we talk to say the government needs to listen to the drivers. Kawawa din naman po yung mga jeepney driver po natin. Hindi po nila afford yung pag-face out ng jeep. Ako naiintindihan ko personally yung mga pinaglalaban din naman nung nasa panic na mga mag-strike. Pero kailangan din ay salang-alang yung panic ng mga commuters. 
at saka sana masolusyonan ito ng gobyerno. To prepare for the strike, Malacanang ordered the suspension of classes in all levels and government work on Monday. Lizada says in the previous strikes, some members of Piston harassed some drivers who, who refused to join uh, the strike. Um, now, to prevent this from happening, Lizada says they will deploy additional policemen, specifically in Malabon, Caloocan, and Philcoa in Quezon City. Mai. McCoy, there was also a strike last September 25. Now, wasn't that a different group? Well, my that strike in September was organized by Transport Group Stop and Go Coalition, so that's a different group from Piston. That strike wasn't that successful. A lot of operators and uh, drivers opted to operate that day. However, Stop and Go Coalition President June Magno said that they will organize another strike this month. The group has yet to confirm if that is indeed going to happen. With the war nearing its end, preparations for the city's massive reconstruction are expected to go in full swing. Authorities are meeting with stakeholders to plan for the work ahead. Our senior correspondent David Santos joins us live from Iligan City for the latest. David, what was discussed in the meeting so far? Well, my recommendations and more recommendations. Well, this afternoon, renowned urban planner June Palafox met with members of Task Force Bangon Marawi. Earlier today, leaders of the different traditional royal families in Lanao also discussed proposals on how rehabilitation should be carried out. Now, Marawi Mayor Mahul Gandamra, speaking before Sultanate leaders, says any rehab plan should be, quote, sensitive to the cultural and religious aspirations of the Maranaos. Gandamra says the local government has its own rehab plan amounting to more than 48 billion pesos. Now, he's set to present this in a meeting with some of President Duterte's cabinet members middle next week. Now, of this amount, Gandamra says 16 billion pesos will go to a compens compensation fund for owners of destroyed homes. Now, Sultanate leaders are also voicing concern on pronouncements that government may take over vast hectares of land in Marawi once the war ends. Ang mga lupa na yan ay uh, uh, ano, para sa amin talaga yan. Hindi namin alam na may mga military reservation pala. Now, the idea of June Palafox, he wants Marawi to do a Hiroshima or Nagasaki in Japan. Preser that is to preserve the war ruins in the old city of Marawi and build an entirely new center where be better uh, urban planning can be implemented. Old city and create a new city, learn from the mistakes. Of, uh, magiging urban laboratory pa, mistakes made. Kasi it's not security by design. Of course, the much-anticipated liberation of Marawi remains as the primary concern for residents here. To say they are longing to go home after almost five months of grueling wait and staggering destruction to infrastructure and properties is almost an understatement. Now, if and when the military declares it has retaken Marawi, Mayor Gandamra wants Maute leaders captured, preferably alive. Of course, we are urging our PR government na dapat to talaga. Kung sino managot, dapat to, they should be brought to uh, the Bar of Justice. Now, as they wait, local leaders also want to make sure they are getting ready to see the day Marawi is back in government control. Mai. David, June Palafox's concept of the Marawi rehabilitation seems grand having compared its rehabilitation to Japan and uh, I understand Europe like Germany and Spain. Now did he say how much this proposal would cost? 
will my eight billion dollars, that's roughly 400 billion pesos, or eight times the amount the government is initially proposing, which is about only 50 billion pesos. Now, we did ask Mr. Palafox how viable or how realistic is an eight billion dollar rehab plan for Marawi. He argued if corruption in the country can go up to 15 billion dollars a year, it can afford to rebuild Marawi at $8 billion, provided the government can find a way to put an end to corruption, which, by our standards, is pretty much a daunting challenge as rebuilding Marawi itself might. Thank you. Senior Correspondent David Santos there, reporting live from Iligan City.